This is Locked On A's, your daily podcast available on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Wayne Coy. Good to be here. Athletic supporter since I knew what a baseball was and media dude for a long, long time. Thank you for being here today. If you are here again after you listened yesterday and maybe the day before, you're an everydayer. So go ahead and put that in the comments down below so that I know you're here. I want to shout you out. I want the world to know that you're coming in every day to get the latest on the A's. Okay, and if this is just your first time, welcome aboard. Whether you're watching us on YouTube or uh, you are listening to us in the, uh, the old-fashioned way. It's funny to say that about a podcast. But wherever you get your podcast, that's where you find us. And it's uh, nice to have you here. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel's pretty cool. I just discovered for the first time I'd been thinking about it. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to download the app because I can't pass up this deal. Uh, it's basically, if you're a new customer, $5 gets you $200 in bonus bets. I didn't stutter. Okay. Take that money. Use those bets on whatever you want. Win or lose. Doesn't matter. Bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Football on Thursday night. New Orleans Saints and those sharp. You know what? I don't think Carolina is going to have their quarterback, but we'll talk about that later. Right now, we got to talk about scorched earth. We got to talk about Trevor. I'll say what I feel like saying May, the Oakland A's closer who announced his retirement streaming on Twitch, which is cool. He kind of hangs out there. He's a gamer. Uh, got quite the following. He's on every social media outlet, all of that. Very quotable. I think he's going to end up behind a microphone someday. I mean, in a traditional or non-traditional sense. I see him as kind of a Pat McAfee type. Anyway, uh, Trevor retired from baseball after nine seasons. The best season that he had statistically was this last one for the A's, which is incredible when you think about how bad they were and that he missed a month of the season. But he still saved 21 games for a team that lost well over 100 uh, and only 150. So if you think about that, 50 and 112, and he saved 21 games and won a few. So he's pretty much involved in about half of their victories. So going out on top, it's the way you should go. So Trevor uh, retired, broke that big news, and then barely, barely had a chance to catch his breath before he decided to share some other news. And that is his absolute disdain for John Fisher, the owner of the Oakland A's, and how he feels about how the fans have been treated, how he appreciates their support and the players not being blamed for everything that's going on. And uh, he let it out. I mean, uh, not suitable for work, as they say. Definitely some choice language. Which, by the way, uh, today Trevor went on a couple of other media outlets, one in particular in the Bay Area, and he said that he does regret a couple of things. One of them is using the language, and the second, he goes, I wish I didn't cuss so much. And then the second thing was, he said, I don't like name calling. He goes, I don't like to be called names, and it's not right to call other people names. So he kind of said that he regretted doing that, but he followed that up by saying that everything else that he said He's 100% convicted. That's how he feels. Um, so, you know, I got me wondering. First of all, you know I'm on Team Trevor, right? I'm uh, I'm a cell guy. I got my shirt. I, I was at the reverse boycott. I'm from Oakland. That's my hometown. And uh, grew up watching the A's play. So I, I want them to stay right where they are. And you may say, well, that's crazy because you live in Las Vegas. Uh, I get that. But you know, the truth is, and I said this to somebody today in the comments on YouTube, I could get to that new stadium site in about 15 to 20 minutes. And first of all, it's horrible. It's a postage stamp on the back of the Tropicana Casino. I know they're going to knock down those two towers, but still it's nine acres. Retractable roof? I don't think so. Maybe a dome. Um, and it's, it's nowhere near what the A's said they needed and wanted to build. So I don't really get it uh, at all. I know that everything's been jammed through up to this point. So will the Trevor May activities 
of yesterday and today and probably for the next week. It's like it's everywhere. Can't miss it. Um, will that affect in any way, shape, or form the vote that's going to be taken for relocation at the owners' meetings in Arlington in November? Uh, if I was an owner and I heard an actual player talking like that, I would make the natural assumption that those opinions are probably being held by many in the clubhouse. You have to wonder, too, how many games they lost because they just were in a funky place mentally. I mean, you try to shut it out, but it's, I, it's impossible. How can you? I mean, you see the empty seats, then you, then you hear the chants, and you see the full stadium for reverse boycott night. So it's, it's obvious that there's an issue with ownership. And if you're a player on that team and you get affected by that, could that affect your play on the field? Sure. How could it not, right? Now, I'm not saying that, you know, we should be in the World Series by any stretch. But I think that might have contributed. Anyway, we'll see what happens with the owners. Uh, it ain't over till it's over. No uh, shovels in the ground. No renderings yet. They did say, though, that uh, they expect that the renderings will probably drop like uh, after the World Series, kind of toward the end of October, third week to the end. Which would give them, what, about a month? Uh, yeah, probably about a month to uh, take that into consideration before their vote. So we'll see. I mean, it's anybody's guess how all that's going to go. Do not know. But I'm interested to find out. I mean, this is something we've been dealing with since, what, April or May? Anyway. I stumbled into something pretty interesting, and I want to talk about what I found on my phone today in just a minute. But right now, I got to tell you about FanDuel. Yeah, I finally dove in to the deep end, by the way. I mean, I had to. It's $5. Gets you $200 in bonus bets. So you can have a whole bunch of fun. You know, you got the overs, you got the unders, you got the player props. You got uh, so much that you can just have a good time with. And it really does gets you into the game. I mean, there's no way around it. And, uh, you know, even if you're betting just a few dollars, it doesn't matter. I mean, it just adds to the enjoyment, the experience of watching the game. And it's time to get in on the action because $5 for, from a new customer after you download the app to get you $200 in bonus bets, why wouldn't you do that? So check them out today. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season if you haven't already with FanDuel. What are we, six weeks in? Time to get off the couch. Let's go. FanDuel, by the way, official partner of the NFL. So I'm on my phone and I'm one of those guys who keeps every email he ever received. I mean, like ever received. I got him all the way back to, uh, you've got mail. AOL. Remember when we used to have AOL that you get the disc? Yeah. I got the free media account. I didn't have to pay. See? So that was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, thankfully, it doesn't take us all night to download one song anymore. We live in a new world. Um, and with that in mind, I like to read my old emails because I can. I got a phone that I can bring them all up on. And as I'm zipping through, I see an email from my buddy, Scotty, and it says, this is the subject. Hope you're sitting down. Strange but true, A's are number one. So the first thing I did is I'm like, when was this? Figuring, oh, it's got to be 2012, right? 2013, somewhere in there. 2008. 08. I don't remember that. I remember that team not being very good. Serious. So I needed to re-immerse myself after I read the article. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but basically it said, no one could have predicted it. A silent, for a silent force <laughs> rising out of Northern California. A team that was supposed to be in a rebuilding mode. One that's lucky to reach 500 let alone the top of our MLB power rankings. Well, totally killing the lead here, but 
uh, you know, as good as they were in April and May. It's how bad they were in June, July, and August. Uh, it was not a good year for the A's. They finished 75 and 86, well under 500, third place in the AL West. Now, compared to this last year, <laughs> they were the world champs, right? Uh, and I had to look, to, you know, to kind of remember, okay, who was on that team? Justin Ducher. Ducherer. Ducherer. I mangled his name so many times. Anyway, he was uh, he was somebody that was a reliever and then became a starter. And what a starter he was. 2008, 10 and 8, 2.54 ERA, 22 starts. 141 innings for Justin. He used to always spit. Remember? He had like a nervous habit of spitting. Anyway, that was the most innings in his career, and it wasn't even close. I mean, it was like triple the most innings he'd ever pitched before. Had Houston Street as our closer, dealt him away the next year, um, but he saved 18 games. The rest of the staff, eh, meh is the word, I think. You had uh, Joe Blanton, Dana Evelyn, Greg Smith. Yeah, it just wasn't good. But Rich Harden, you know, we waited and we waited and we waited for him to come around. He was like Steve Carsey, right? He had all the stuff in the world, great fastball, just couldn't stay healthy. That's the first thing. And had control issues. That's the second thing. In fact, not necessarily in that order right? Well, he had put it together for 2008. He was 5-1, and 2.34 ERA, had 92 strikeouts in 77 innings, and again, was mostly avoiding the injury bug. June 8th, he had an immaculate inning. And you know what that is, right? That's, that's nine pitches, and you're out of there. Three strikes, three strikes, three strikes, no balls, nine pitches, three batters, done. Immaculate. So he did that on June 8th, and then exactly one month later, July 8th, the A's shipped him away to the Chicago Cubs for three players that didn't amount to diddly, and one who did. And that saved the deal, really. Josh Donaldson, have you heard of him? Yeah, he was part of that deal. We had to give up Chad Godin, though, so I don't know. Did we lose that trade? Nah, Josh was pretty good. Offense should be offensive, is what I should say. Um, no power whatsoever. Lack of offense, basically. Well, you had Jack Cust. Jack Cust hit 33 home runs that year. And that's as good as it got, <laughs> okay? Because after Cust was Emil Brown, who had 13. You had Mark Ellis. Yeah, Mark Ellis, second baseman, not known for his pop, right? Occasionally hits one out. Well, he had a typical Mark Ellis year, and that was good enough for third with 11 home runs. And then that son of a uh, – Derek Barton, the guy you love to hate, nine home runs. And if you're wondering where I'm at on that, yeah, I every meme, I'm down with it. I think – I can't prove it, but I think maybe he had some pictures of somebody because how he stuck around for as long as he did – I will never figure that out, ever figure that out. Billy Bean, you got some splaining to do. Anyway, uh, moving on from my least favorite player from the 2000s. There were some pieces there, though. And I fast forwarded to 2012, you know, when the A's won the division? Last day of the season, it was exciting. Who was on that team? Anybody from the 2008 team? Yep. Four years later, Kurt Suzuki, Frank Thomas, Cargo. That's right, you forgot, huh? Yeah, we had Carlos Gonzalez. Traded him to Denver for the worst, <laughs> the worst season Matt Holiday ever played anywhere. Okay. Rajay Davis, plenty of speed. Bobby Crosby, rookie of the year. Travis Buck, you know you got that jersey. You do. You have a Travis Buck jersey. You have three of them, I'll bet. They gave them away. It's, it's great at the A's games because, you know, nobody stays. So you're always seeing jerseys with names of players that used to be there. 
I like to rock the Tejada every now and again, you know? But yeah, Travis Buck. I think they had Travis Buck jersey night like three years in a row. Anyway, what's the point of all of this? Well, proof positive that baseball is a marathon. It's not a sprint. 162 games. Basically, it, it's, you know, what did uh, Dennis say back in the day with the Vikings? Dennis Green? Go ahead and crown them. They are who we thought they are. Well, you certainly find out who you are in baseball. Cream rises to the top, and you know what sinks to the bottom. And that's what we were this last year. But it's still good to know that within a four-year range, you could go from that team that was really nothing to talk about. The Bob Guerin years as a whole were pretty rough. But as bad as they were, there was those pieces, right? Suzuki, Donaldson, uh, Jerry Blevins, Gio, Derek Barton. I think those are the people that made it to 2012. The other people I mentioned earlier were on the 208 team, 2008. The ones that made it to 2012, Kurt Suzuki, Jerry Blevins, uh, Gio Gonzalez, and uh, yeah, Derek Barton. 204, 46 games. Anyway, um, they got that division title just four years later. So that's kind of cool. So maybe, just maybe, the point I'm making is maybe we've got pieces right now, okay? And maybe they just need to be nurtured and surrounded and, you know, you, you build with what you have. And if it was, well, it was, rip it down to the studs and rebuild time, then I think that's what we need to do. That and put on our bird dogs. I want to go fantasy shopping with you here in just a minute. We're going to we're going to raid another team's roster. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about my friends at Bird Dogs. Check this out. See that? That's my Bird Dogs hat. See this right here? See that? I don't know if you can see it. Can you see? Those are my Bird Dogs. The shorts. The ones I was talking about at the grocery store. Yeah. And I got the long pants versions too. But uh, what's cool is stretch khaki. Sucks, okay? Uh, usually. If you get it at, I don't want to say the names of the stores, but you know what I'm talking about. Bird Dogs has figured out how to do stretch khaki and do it to make you look good. Uh, think Lululemon, anything you would get there, but way better. The fit is slimmer. It's, it's definitely accentuating all the good things and downplaying the bad. You get that truly sculpted look, even if you're not truly sculpted. Yeah, with the shorts or the long pants, either way. They just fit good. They fit better. They fit way better, in fact, than the competition because they're not that stiff, whatever that is, khaki, cotton, okay? Not that. Bird Dogs has fixed it. They figured out a way to make you comfortable and look cool at the same time. They call it cloud knit fabric. And it looks like khaki but it stretches to give you kind of a, a better profile, slimmer fit. And, you know, it's just not all baggy and everything. So you don't have to sacrifice movement, though. So that's the main thing. Even though you have on some slim-fitting pants or shorts, it's not like a boa constrictor around your legs, right? I mean, you don't, like, bend the wrong way when you get up. Uh, no, it's good. Bird dogs. They're also using that anti-stink sweat wicking fabric on the inside. So not only are you cool and comfortable and you look great, all of that, but you don't smell bad at all. You smell good, in fact, because you're wearing bird dogs and you're going to wear them all day long. They are functional. Whether you're going out, you're staying in, any occasion, bird dogs. Go to birddogs.com. And when you get there, birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. Okay. Or you can enter the promo code locked on MLB when you check out and don't forget, they're going to give you a complimentary water bottle and it's a nice one. You're going to be able to get that with your order, but you got to hurry. It's birddogs.com. Check them out. You're not, you're not going to ever take them off birddogs.com slash locked on MLB for a free water bottle at checkout and you won't want to take your bird dogs off. I mean, I took mine off so I could show you, but you won't, you won't do that. Okay, let's go shopping. You ready? Fantasy shopping. 
hey, let's admit it. Slow time of the year. World Series is happening. We're waiting on this A's relocation thing. We're kind of in the lull, right? I mean, the playoffs are great. By the way, how about those, I can't believe it, Houston Astros go on the road and win in, in Arlington. So now does this mean, because remember the Rangers won two uh, in Houston. So this, this is going to be one of those series maybe where the visiting team wins every game. So if your trajector, your trajectory is working, I can't do the math because it's best of seven. All right. Play four in their park and three in yours. Okay, so Houston had home field advantage. That means Texas would win if the visiting team wins every game. So we got the Rangers roster. We already took two players from there. We took two players from the Astros. We absconded the Astros. And what we're going to do today is get out of the American League. I know it's hard for an A's fan, but we're going to go to the National League. And in our fantasy world, what you're doing here is you're picking a position player and a pitcher from each of the teams that are still in the playoffs. Playoffs? Okay, let's start with the D-backs. We're going to dunk the D-backs. We're going to find two players on their roster, and I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to start with the pitcher. And after the way things worked in game one of their series, you probably are thinking, really? You're going to go with Zach Gallon? Yes, I am. Zach Gallon is what used to be known as a stopper. Having a losing streak, here comes a stopper. I'm talking about Jim Palmer, Dave Stewart, Vita Blue, Catfish Hunter, Greg Maddox, Randy Johnson. You know the type. Pedro Martinez, Roger Clemens. Do I say his name? Sure. He's not even playing anymore, though. Little Timmy Lincecum in San Francisco. There, I said it. Okay. Um, so I'm picking Zach Gallon, despite what happened the other night. Definition of an ace. He's a Tim Hudson. He's one of those guys. And I think he's – the Diamondbacks are very fortunate to have him on their team. And I think he'll fare better in his next start in the postseason. I really do. So I'm taking him. He'll be the ace of the A's staff, of course. And then we need a position player. And I'm not going to take the obvious choice because they've got a couple of those. I'm going to go – with the prospect that we've been hearing about for the last couple of years, who got called up in September, cup of coffee, as they say, shortstop, Jordan Lawler, which means Nick Allen, you now have competition. Let the best man win. Yeah, I'd bring him in for sure. The guy uh, just looks, he looks Derek Jeter-ish, really. Um, maybe not so much with a bat yet, but I think that's going to come. And uh, I think there's a reason he's been near the top of the prospect lists for the last couple of years. Jordan Lawler, that's who I'm taking from Arizona. What about you? I'm taking Zach and I'm taking Jordan. Are, who are you going to take from the Arizona roster? Put it in the comments if you don't mind. If you're listening to the podcast, of course, you can get us at Locked On A's on Twitter or X or whatever the heck we're calling it today. Uh, tomorrow might be the toughest task of all because, yeah, only one team standing. Oh, by the way, Friday we're going to pick a manager, okay, out of all four. But uh, tomorrow it's the Phillies, and those are tough choices because that whole team can rake, right? you got some big stars on that team. They've been hitting so many home runs, it's, it's crazy. Um, I think they're pretty unstoppable at this point. They're hot, 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 as Buster Poindexter once said so eloquently. So, yeah, we'll get into the Phillies tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, I just uh, want you to have a great day, and thanks for being here. If this is your first time, let us know that in the comments. If you've got anything at all you want to uh, chime in on that you heard today, uh, you can mention that as well. Let us know if you're an everydayer. Let us know if you're a first-timer. Appreciate all of that. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be back with another episode of Locked on A's. You can count on that. And until then, I'm Wayne Coy. Keep on swinging.